Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and today I want to kick off a new SolidWorks API video series dealing with a specific project. Now, at this point in time, if you've already gone through the series SolidWorks API for the total beginner that Keith Rice did, and you've also followed along in the project time tracker series that I did, where we made a time tracker that allowed you to log in and log out of a file and record the amount of time you spent modeling on it then you probably have a pretty good idea of how SOLIDWORKS API works, how you can use the VBA and create these very handy macros that you can use for many different functions. Now, I don't claim to be a SOLIDWORKS API expert by any means. There's so many facets of this, different programming languages and so on, but I've messed with it enough to know where some of the design challenges and the hurdles are that you guys face when you're just learning it. So, We've already talked about several different things in Keith's series and, and the one that I did on the project tracker, but I want to touch on a specific topic that might be giving you guys trouble as you start to work with API. Now, what I want to do in this series is create something that allows us to measure a face, measure the surface area of a face. Now, this doesn't seem like it's a very useful tool, especially since we have a measure tool built into SOLIDWORKS that already allows us to do things like measure the face. But what this does allow us to do is have a user form that is on the screen, allows us to interact with SOLIDWORKS in this case, and also get information back from what the user is selecting. So there's a few key things there and a few things that you guys can pick up, different ways that you can interact with your model and hopefully get a little bit of information on that. Now to get started on the project, we're gonna go about it the same way by going to tools, macros, and start a new macro. Now we need to, of course, name this something meaningful. So I'm just gonna call this measure face. Now the reason I'm only measuring a face is because I don't wanna go through each instance of getting and selecting a vertex, edges, multiple faces, whatever the case might be. We wanna just look at a single task here. Now, in most cases, what I'll do is inside of my sub main, I'll start creating some of the program and then interact with it, make sure that the functionality works okay. But in this case, I'm actually gonna start by creating a user form. Now, it's gonna be a very simple user form. There's not gonna be much to it. But what we wanna do is we wanna allow the user to adjust the decimal places that they'll have in their final surface area. And then we also wanna give a little text box and a button. So again, very simple. The first thing we need to do is have a label. So with this label, we're gonna place a label that just says decimal places. So the name is label, but I'm gonna go ahead and call it DEC place. And then inside the caption, we'll say decimal places. Now, of course, you can control the font here. We're gonna go ahead and change this to Rockwell. We'll do bold and let's say 16 font. That way it's nice and big and very easy to read. And we'll bring this up to the left-hand corner. So now we have a decimal places option here. And what we wanna do is have a box that we can control the value. So we're gonna need a spin button and we'll go ahead and we'll draw the spin button in here. And then we're gonna need a text box that's populated with that spin button. So we have a text box and we'll just place it here next to the spin button. Now, of course, we can come back and we can change all the sizes and scales later. But what we want to do first is go into the spin button and we're going to modify the min and max value. Now, we can leave it at zero for the min, but the max, let's say that we want to go up to six decimal places. So this is going to be the range for our spin button. So in order to populate this text box, I'm gonna double click on the spin button. Now we have a private sub for the change in the spin button value. So what we want is we wanna figure out inside of our user form, the name that is actually given to our text box. In this case, it's text box one. So we'll go back to the spin button change and inside here, I'm gonna go ahead and make a little bit of space. And I'm just gonna say text box one dot value is equal to spin button one dot value. All right, so if we go back to our user form, we can play our user form. So as we move this up and down, you can see that it's adjusting based on the spin button. This is exactly what we need here. Now, of course, we need to change a few things such as the text itself, the size of the text and so on. So let's come in here and let's keep everything consistent. We'll use Rockwell, we'll do bold and we'll do 14. And again, we'll play our user form. All right, so one thing that it's missing is an initial value. So let's go ahead and scale this down a bit. And then we wanna give this box an initial value. 
So as we look through the properties here, we can take a look at the different things that we have in order to control this. So you can see that there are quite a few different things here. And what we have is a name, and what we want to control is actually the caption that's inside of our box. So inside of this value here in text, we're going to just place the number zero. This also gives us a helpful thing that we can see on the screen. We can see the actual size of our box, so we know how big to make it in order to leave enough room for that text. That allows us to do things like rescale the spin button, and that way we have everything roughly the same scale on the screen. Let's test it once more to make sure it still works. Now, as you can see, that initial value is zero, and we can move it up and down from zero to six in this case. So now we know that the spin button is working, and in this case, the text box that is linked to that spin button is working. The next thing we need to do is we need to have a text box that will actually output the value, the current value of the face that we're measuring. So again, we're gonna place another text box here, and this one, I'm gonna make a good bit larger. I'll just drag it all the way across the screen. We're gonna come in and we're gonna adjust the text. Again, we wanna make sure everything is the same. We're gonna use Rockwell bold and I'll use 14 again and we also need to give this an initial value now we can do a few things here we can do an initial value as a text inside of here and we can simply say nothing captured or we could do that inside the code all right so for now let's just go ahead and leave it as the text value in the properties and once that gets populated it'll get overwritten by whatever value we measure and then we simply need a button so in this case, we'll just put a single command button here. And this button is named command button one. Let's go ahead and change the caption to measure. And again, we wanna change the text. Again, Rockwell, bold, and let's give it 16 font. All right, so now we have a very basic user form and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this user form because the thing that we really wanna focus on is the functionality. So in this first video, it was a basic overview of what we plan to accomplish and also getting the user form set up. So if you have any questions on this, please let us know, solidworksupport at mlc-cad.com and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.